Hello, so we all know that the best thing you can do is set up your development environment to match your production environment. And most production environments these days are running Linux with Ubuntu on it. So what we're gonna look at today is how to set up a virtual machine using VirtualBox and installing Ubuntu on that and then configuring it to run all the things you need to have a Ruby on Rails development environment on your own computer on Ubuntu. So some of the steps we're going to take is installing VirtualBox and Ubuntu, both of which are free. Everything we're going to be using today is free, no charge. Um, then we're going to be doing uh, some configuration to Ubuntu to make it run faster on a virtual machine because it oftentimes can run a little bit slow. So we're going to speed that up. Then we're going to install Ruby. We're going to install some uh, Ruby uh, configuration stuff. And then we're going to install Rails. After that, we're going to install Postgres. And then to make sure everything's working properly, we're going to create a really quick app at the very end just to make sure everything's perfect. All right, so enjoy. All right, all right, all right. All right, so we have a lot to cover here, so I'm going to go fairly quickly. Now, um, everything that I'm doing here is written down in a step-by-step -step guide, including all the copy-paste little uh, bash uh, commands that we're going to want to run to install all the things you're going to see in this video. Once you get your VirtualBox installed and your Ubuntu installed on the VirtualBox, all these other configurations and setups for Ruby on Rails and Postgres can be found in this document linked to in the description. So I'm going to move quickly here, but keep in mind there is a list of the different commands to do. This is just to show you the process. And also keep in mind this process has been sped up to about 16 minutes. This usually takes a few hours just in waiting. And not You're not working the whole time, you're just waiting for things to download and install. So here we go. Let's just walk through the entire process in about 15, 16 minutes. So the first thing you're going to, go, going to do is go over to VirtualBox at VirtualBox.org and download the VirtualBox package that suits the system you're installing it on. In this case, I'm going to install it on a Windows machine, so I downloaded that. Next, head on over to Ubuntu.com. You're going to look for the desktop version and then the download section. You're going to install Ubuntu 15.10. That's the one that is at the time of this video. I installed 32-bit version. I'd recommend probably the 64 as I'm not entirely happy with the 32-bit. It's causing some issues. Once this is downloaded and you've installed the virtual box using the wizard onto your computer, you can simply click a new virtual machine, enter in a name called Ubuntu, and set up for the type and version. In this case, I'm using Ubuntu 32-bit. I set memory size to about 3 gigs, which I seem to work quite nicely. And then I'm going to go for a fixed size uh, hard drive at about 20 gigs in size. That word works good. The minimum they say 8 gig is just way too small. So 20 sort of works. This takes a few minutes to set up, but once it's done, we can go into the settings of our Ubuntu machine and set up some of the things like where the disk, the load disk is. That's that Ubuntu ISO that you downloaded earlier. Find that in your downloads folder or whatever, link to it. Video memory, we're going to do about 50 megabytes. System, we'll live at 3. Everything else sort of looks good. And I'll start that up. This will take a little bit of time to start up. But once it's there, now we can start configuring and installing Ubuntu. All right, so it's going to ask you to try or install Ubuntu. I'd recommend just installing it and clicking the download updates while installing. That way everything is up to date at this stage instead of having to go back and do it later. We're going to erase disk and install Ubuntu. Now that sounds scary, but remember we're inside a virtual machine here. This isn't your actual hard drive. So it's going to ask you if you want to partition some things, you click OK. The next step is going to be selecting your uh, location for time zones and things like that. We're going to click Continue. This may take a bit, but we're, now we're going to select Keyboard Layout. In this case, I'm English US. And set up the uh, admin username and password. This is all pretty basic. I, I picked login automatically so I don't require a password every single time. Now this will take quite a bit of time. I've sped it up, uh, but just keep in mind there's a lot of things to install. The last thing you're going to do is restart the whole uh, virtual machine simply by clicking that button there. And then we'll start it back up and move on to some more configuration stuff. One thing you'll notice is that when you start it up, the Ubuntu screen will only be a part of your uh, display even though you might go to full screen. So to fix that we need to ins install some guest software that comes with the virtual box. So if you just click on that in the input and click run, enter your password, it'll open up a terminal window and start installing the guest additions for Linux. 
This is going to help fix this by allowing you to change the virtual uh, screen size to those different, you know, 19, 20 by 1080 type things. So now that that's done, what we're going to do is restart or shut down the computer. Not the computer, sorry, the virtual machine. And then we're going to restart it. And you'll find that we'll have access to changing the screen size uh, to be a full screen. Much better to work with. So now that we have it full sized, we're going to do a few things in the terminal window. So to get to terminal, you can simply right click and then say open terminal. Then we're going to do a uh, apt-get update. So apt-get is the, the sort of package installer for Ubuntu. And you want to make sure that that is completely uh, you know, up to date and or upgraded. So we run that, we enter our password, and then that's going to install everything. Obviously it takes longer, I've sped it up. The next thing is upgrade. We're going to do apt-get upgrade. And then uh, we're also going to do another upgrade called apt-get dist, D-I-S-T, upgrade. Okay, We're just making sure that all the um, package uh, and repository places that we're getting all our software from is up to date. So we'll run this one again. It's asking for the password for sudo, for sudo which stands for super user do. Um, and now that that's done, we can start looking at installing some essential packages. Uh, it looks like I'm shutting down and going to restart. So it can be good to do that every now and then. I might actually go into the settings here, yeah, and I'm going to get rid of the uh, the disk that's attached there, just so I have nothing in the disk space. It's just run, going to boot off the hard drive, no problem. Now I open terminal again and go in and let's see what I'm going to do here. Okay, I'm going to start installing these essential uh, packages and pieces of software. So I have a few lines in the gist uh, setup guide thing that I have on GitHub. You can just simply copy paste these things and the essential uh, packages are simply things like the git, uh, XML stuff, Python things, libmagiccore, li imagemagic, uh, SSL tools, just a whole uh, bunch of things that you're going to need if you want to run this as a development environment. So uh, we're going to eventually run Vim. So here we are here, we're installing Vim, which is going to be the text editor that I've uh, chosen to use for a lot of these videos on this development environment. You can install any text editor you want, really, uh, that runs on Ubuntu. Next up is going to be Git. Uh, Git is a version, a version control uh, tool that we're going to use, so we want to install that. Unity Tweak Tool we'll do next. Now Unity Tweak Tool we're going to use to uh, help make turn some things off with Ubuntu. We're also going to install something called a Compiz Config Settings Manager, which is next here. And that's going to do the same thing. It's going to help us turn off different things like animations, and that'll get Ubuntu running a lot faster on our virtual machine. Because virtual machines aren't actual full computers, uh, standalone computers, so they don't have as much horsepower as, say, um, you know, just a normal desktop running Ubuntu. So we're going to go and change the user, uh, um, what was that line there? Uh, we want to store our actual code files on the main OS, not Ubuntu. Uh, oh yeah, okay, so we need a permission for the user to access the VirtualBox um, shared folders. So I just changed that there. That way, in the future, we're going to be accessing everything off of a shared folder, but we need permission to do that. So that was the line sudo user mod a g uh, vbox sfj in this thing on the screen right now what we're doing is i'm just going into the basher c file and i'm changing the way that the um the prompt line looks so instead of being my name there it's simply going to be square brackets and then um just the directory the current directory we're in i've also uh, made it so that it shows if there is a git repository it shows the git branch that we're on in that square brackets as well so I'm changing the font in here so we can see things a little bit better. It's a little small, so now that we've got the font larger, I'm going to also fool around with some of the color schemes. That's always important to do to get that looking exactly the way that you want it. So it's easy for you to read things, easy for everything to fit on a screen, and the coloring just sort of suits the way that you like to work. People have different preferences. It is a personal preference type of thing here. I think after this I also changed the uh, desktop background and things like that. This is not mandatory, but it is uh, sort of fun to do. So we'll just see what happens. 
It's my next step. Awesome aliases. So my next step is to go into a bash dash aliases uh, file and I just pasted in a bunch of aliases. That's also in the git gist file that I have. And aliases are just a way of shortcutting different commands you use in bash. So you can see the list of the different aliases I have there. Alrighty, so next up I'm going to um, let's see, turn off, we're going to speed up some of the features that Ubuntu has on it just to get things to load a little bit faster. So I'm going to use the Unity Tweak tool and we're going to turn off like magnification, um, we're going to do things like, let's see, uh, set the texture uh, quality to fast, we're going to have the window animations turned off. Um, We're going to auto hide some stuff. The launcher, we have no uh, animations on any of the icons. Then we're going to go over the search tab and we're going to uh, turn off the blur uh, background. So don't need that on. So that's all the things we'll turn off with the Unity tool. The other one is we're going to utilize the uh, Compiz settings manager and we're going to go in and turn off some of the animations, the fading windows, uh, and accessory. We don't have anything on there, so that's good. Uh, I think that's it for that one. Okay, so we'll wait for that to reload. We're going to change the background again. This is a personal preference thing, but those other two tools, the CCSM and the Unity Tweak tool, those things are, are really what's going to adjust the speed on how things run on your virtual machine. I changed the icons to be much smaller, um, and this is all personal preference things. Uh, again, that, that's all in the settings of Ubuntu. All right, so. I have a few things I can do here. Uh, I'm gonna, I can change some Ubuntu settings by making, like displaying the hidden startup applications. That's what that line is. The line I just did was to make the uh, scroll bar show up uh, properly. And then lastly, I'm putting the username back in the top panel just so it shows. You can see it's up there now, top left. And then we're going to do a little bit of cleanup here. So we're just going to uh, auto remove some things and clean up some of the packages that we were installing at the very beginning. So it's important to do that just to make sure everything's nice and and uh, the, the teardowns are all done and everything's good. Next up is some shared folder stuff. So I'm using a shared, a shared folder. I go to an other path, which is the uh, Dropbox development folder in there. I'm going to click OK and auto mount and make permanent those things. Once I click OK, I already did my user um, permissions before. So this is probably going to require a uh, restart. So I'm not too sure what I was looking for here. I went in to see if I had an alias set up, but I'm uh, not really using it at all. Yeah, I'm not too sure what I was looking for there. So I'm just going to shut down so I can restart and I have access to a lot of the um, shared folder stuff. The next things we have to do is set up our actual development environment for Ruby and Rails. So once this loads up, what we're going to do is install uh, RBENV. Now RBENV is the Ruby env environment uh, manager. So we can choose and install different uh, versions of Ruby and then switch back and forth on the one machine. I'm doing some basic commands here to um, set up the RBNV using the bash RC file. So I'm just echoing some commands over so when the terminal launches it knows where to find things. Uh, I do a few of these commands. Again, these are all in the setup script so you might as well just access that and then copy paste over with that. Uh, we're going to install Ruby 2.2.3. Uh, I currently am using 2.3.0 so I've installed a version after this but it's the same process. You just go RBENV install then the version number that you want to install. This takes quite a long time, usually from half an hour to an hour. But once that's done, you go RBENV global and then the version number, and that sets the global Ruby. So you can do Ruby V, and it shows you what version of Ruby you're currently set as the global version. One command here we're going to do is the gem uh, command to the gemrc file, which is going to not install the rdocs for all the different gems that we do. Then we're going to gem install bundler, and then we're going to use bundler quite a bit for installing the different uh, gems that we're going to use throughout. Um, there we're going to do uh, apt get install node.js. This is for the JavaScript runtime we're going to need. And uh, next we're going to configure some git stuff like git global color. We're going to set that to true. We're going to set the global username and the global email. 
Uh, and then after that, we're going to utilize the SSH for uh, shelling or accessing GitHub. And you're going to want an SSH key. And you can follow the directions on GitHub for doing this. You're typically going to do um, SSH key gen with your email. And I didn't show it, but it sort of sets everything up for you. And you can copy paste that into GitHub. And then you can run SSH to github.com. Uh, and that'll tell you if you did it successfully or not. But anyways, a lot of that instruction is on GitHub, and I also have it in um, in that setup file. Next, we're going to gem install uh, Rails. I'm using version 4.2.4. This will install all the packages and bundles that are required um, with the Rails. It does take quite a long time. This is probably the biggest install Rails next to the Ruby one. It takes it takes a long time. Once it's done, though, we can uh, what we want to do is RBENV rehash to make sure it's using the Rails and then check the Rails version of 4.2.4 on the computer and everything worked out perfect. All right, now we're going to install Postgres 9.5. So at the time of this recording, 9.5 was the one I wanted to use, so that's what I'm doing. So we're going to, uh, we're just going to access some of the uh, Postgres uh, repos from postgres.org and we're going to just apt-get update and apt-get install. Um, I can't, don't know what line we're on here, but uh, yeah, we're, we're installing Postgres Common right there. Next, we're going to do Postgres 9.5 and the libpq dev, both of those packages. So once those are installed, that means Postgres is on our system, and we can start up the server by doing the sudo, etc., or etc. in it, the Postgres start. And then we can see it started. We'll create a Postgres user using the create user. J is the user on the Ubuntu, so I want to use that. And lastly, I threw in one other package here, gem install rmagic. Because anytime you want to manipulate images in the development environment, you're going to need that R magic on there. So that's the setup uh, complete. So what we should do is test that everything worked in our setup. So we're going to just uh, CD into our development environment, go in and create a new Rails app using Rails new, then test app for the name, uh, D for database of Postgres. And then it's going to install, create all the folders, and then we will do a uh, we'll CD into the folder and check the database YAML. Everything will check out fine. I just wanted to make sure everything was perfect on there. So we'll rake db create the database because Postgres is running, so that should work out fine. And it does. So we'll then Rails S for Rails server. And we can access the Firefox in Ubuntu by going, I create an alias local open that opens up Firefox to localhost 3000. And I can check that everything has been installed properly, which it has. Perfect. So now that we know that, we can close down everything and then delete that test uh, folder. Oh, I'm just checking the logs here to make sure everything looks good. Then now that it is, we'll just go in and delete this test app using rm-r for recursive deletion. We'll just say, do you want to do it recursively? Yes. And now that that's done, we are complete. Very good. All right, so that's the entire process done. Now I've shrunk that down from say four hours maybe of wait time and installing things down to about 15, 16 minutes. So it is sped up quite a bit, but essentially that's every single step from having nothing on your computer um, relating to this development environment to installing the VirtualBox, Ubuntu, and all the configurations running through all the Ubuntu configurations, installing Ruby, installing Rails, installing Postgres, and all the configurations for those and then even running a test application to make sure everything is set up properly. And there you have it. So that's the entire process to getting your development environment as close as we can uh, without wasting too much time to the production environment. Okay, now just a reminder, I ran all of that on a Windows based machine. That's why I did it. My Mac based development machines, I don't really run a uh, virtual box on there. They are really, really speedy and they work perfectly Linux based operating system. So we are good to go on the Macs, but on the Windows, I really wanted to work on this computer uh, part of the time, especially making videos. So that's why I'm going with the VirtualBox machine there. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hopefully this all works out for you. If you are interested in VirtualBox and Ubuntu, uh, give it a try and see you on the next video.